What's going on, YouTube and podcast listeners? Welcome back to Whiskey and Dragons, where we drink whiskey. And we talk dragons. I'm Targaryen the Barbarian. And I'm Steve the Practical Wizard. That's right. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, Season 3 and going into some of our uh, favorites and maybe not so favorites. But uh, before we dive into that, um, as you know, we drink whiskey. So, uh, Steve, what are we drinking today? Today, we are drinking... Buffalo Trace. Nice, nice. Yes, sir. You know what? I think, uh, now I'm not going to pretend I haven't had this before. Um, <laughs> the, I, I think uh, Buffalo Trace is one of like the best bargain whiskeys. What do you think? I agree with you on that. Yeah, it's 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 a good one. Uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Yep. Good stuff right here. Smooth. Very smooth. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and take a sip. Yes, sir. I will join you on that. We got some old fashions going today. Mm, yeah. Delis, delicioso. Um, Damn, that's good. Mm. One and what, what is that? Smooth, a little smoky, a little kind of a little fruity. Yeah, it just made me think of a uh, Tyrion's uh, favorite saying. What's that? Is uh, how you'd want to <laughs> die. <laughs> a wine full of belly and a girl's belly full of wine. <laughs> 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 X that out right now. <laughs> um, yeah. But anyways, um, yes, I happen, me personally, I, I, it's like definitely my go-to, like, when I just, yeah. I don't feel bad about, like, clearing a bottle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not, now, not in one sitting. I'm just saying it's, like, on a, a hard day, long day after work, yeah. you know, you just want to, like, some people like beer. I happen to like whiskey. I think uh, Buffalo Trace is one of those you could just not feel bad about clearing. Yeah. I agree yeah, with you on that. All right, so um, let's get into today. Season three. Um, I'll let you go ahead and take away with this. For you're, sure. You're the note man. You're really good at it. So one thing I kind of noticed while rewatching season three is it's a little, it's slow, um, yeah, which is kinda. interesting to say because after season two is when I felt like initially things would start to pick up, but it's a big, it's a big kind of slowdown in season yeah. three. Um, we get um the it's picks up right after the battle of blackwater oh that's right that's right yep. yeah so we get the failure uh, of uh um stannis yeah of stannis I trying to take name. king's landing stannis uh, it's like stallion meets <laughs> you know meets a hard man yeah <laughs> no pun intended um and we have what is it uh Tywin writing in as like the hero, the saving the day at the end. Oh of yeah, and that's two. right. And his father treats him like total shit. Yeah, and yeah, then okay. um, I noted for episode one, like right off the bat, there's this confrontation between um, Tywin and Tyrion about um, since Tyrion's like disfigured and he's no longer hand of the king, um, he comes to his dad and he's like, hey, you know, like I have this whole birthright thing. Because oh, I'm yeah. a Lannister, yeah, 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 and I want um, as my birthright, I want Casterly Rock, yeah, because it's mine, it's in our family, and I don't want it. And uh, Tywin just he's not having it. And I wrote down it's a big long speech, but I wrote down this point, which okay, was go ahead, go ahead. You're an ill made, spiteful little oh. creature, and it's like, dude, it's like, fucked up. it's super fucked up, yeah. And I'm like, all right, that's how you want to play it, play it. And he goes in this whole long speech about it, like, pretty much how he like hates him. And he's like, I don't care, like, if Castor, if you think Castor Lee Rock is your birthright, like, I would burn it down before I ever saw you in it. Yeah, dude. You know, is, poor Tyrion. You know what, I know, too? Right? I, I think also, I think, um, now, Tyrion's always a fun character. God yeah. damn, like I said, Peter Dinklage, yes. Yeah. Um, but I think also, in your, to your point, I think uh, season three is kind of the development mm -hmm. of Tyrion. Yeah. Like, in the sense, kind of where he where he becomes like his mm -hmm. own person where it's no longer like, um, he's always a Lannister, but yeah. like, I think to, to your point and, um, it's kind of like he becomes his own, he starts to becoming the Tyrion that we soon yeah. grow to love. I think yeah. that that's definitely a good point. And, um, Ty, uh, Tywin. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's where you kind of, I guess, develop like, I don't know. I still kind of have a love hate with that guy. I think he's a great, I mean, like we recapped, he's a great actor. Um, He's really great for this role. He's a really great villain. I like that about him. I, I always enjoy that about him. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is where you really begin to like love and hate him as well. And yeah, like you said, it's it's Tyrion coming into his own. Um, I think it's because we're seeing him 
no longer be in service to the Lannister family. And he, it's more so what? like, let's be in service to Tyrion because I don't really have anything. What and two, like after that speech, I mean, his <laughs> essentially his dad just threw him aside and he's like, okay, well, if no one gives a shit about, I mean, yeah. what, like going back to the uh, battle of Bla- Blackwater, mm-hmm. um, his sister essentially told that King, the gold cloak King's yeah. guard that to kill him. Yeah. And so, that's a big point with season three is Tyrion's trying to find out, well, I mean, he, he kind of has this hunch that his sister... Well, because Varys. Yeah. His, his, the Whispering Birds. Yeah. So he's got this hunch that it was her. And so he's kind of in pursuit of like this whole, well, I'm going to confront my sister and do something about it. And it's like, well, is he or is he not? Like, how much can he actually do? Especially with like daddy not having his back. That's so. true. And then too, I mean, I think... Uh, and not just, uh, I mean, obviously the development between where he finds out his sister and he kind of feels betrayed, mm-hmm. but I mean, like he just all around gets thrown to the gutter. He does. And that, the, the small, the yeah. small room and the whole thing. And like, and yeah. um, yeah, that's, right, that's where his, room. uh, I think bond with shaving kind of develops. Yeah. And also that's where we, um, where the fine introduction of pod, the sex God, <laughs> sex God pod. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Sex God pod. That's where he comes in, uh, where you, you know, he has his like infamous, like, so sit down here for a while and tell us everything we want to know. <laughs> Him and Bron, they they want to know. Exactly. They want to know what was, what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, there's also a really great scene, like, with Tyrion kind of being on the outs with the family and essentially with, like, the whole kingdom, where Tywin calls this meeting between Varys, um, Cersei, uh, Tyrion, of course, uh, Littlefinger, they're all there. And they all kind of sit. Like, uh, I think it was, like, um, Varys and Littlefinger essentially, like, run over to, to be right next to Tywin at oh, the yeah, table. The, the musical chair part. The musical hey, chair hey, part, hey. yeah. And Tyrion waits, and then Cersei comes and sits on the opposite side, so she's still next to her dad. And then Tyrion grabs the chair and drags it pretty much all the way across the table <laughs> to sit right. Like, I think he's directly across, across yeah like kind of his own like table yeah. all right i'm your spiteful little whatever yeah. you know i'm gonna sit across from you yeah um which is awesome because tywin just sits there and takes it and you can tell he's pissed and wants to say something oh i, just I know he's just shut. to in you know <laughs> the, i forget what's his name the archmaster the one that does sit at yeah the, um i always hated that guy yeah but i mean he's it, like the dirty old man who does yeah. all the hookers and stuff yeah yeah but in general even if he wasn't doing all the hookers he's still like he just has dirty old man he's, vibes he's nasty yeah he's a nasty little little dude like um, a family guy the old man <laughs> come here <laughs> oh that's right uh another good point was the whole like um like i guess you would say happenings between ramsey and oh uh, yeah, that's Theon. Where, that's where he gets uh, Theon finally gets captured. He gets captured. What does he get captured? Or see, that's what I've always wondered because it kind of yeah. never explained it. Does he get captured? Captured or does he get turned over by his own people? Well, he gets knocked out. I know that when he tries to lead the charge. Um, well, he leads the charge on Winterfell, and they take it, and then he's rallying his troops up. Because there's a rumor that gets knocked out that Rob is like at the gates and they're gonna kill what? them and there's somebody I, blowing the horn. But that was a, that was because remember a uh, Bolton, which yeah. which is Ramsey's yeah. dad. Uh, he's the bastard. Yeah. But remember he said, "I'll send my bastard and the men in mm-hmm. in season two to send him to go take back Winterfell." Yeah. Um, what is it? Uh, freaking. Um, I think that's that. I think that's them outside. Yeah. So they're well, and they're under the impression that they're going to get invaded. And I think, um, if I can remember correctly, I think Theon's like under the belief that it's Rob and the people of Winterfell coming back to take their their property. Um, but I remember him saying like, I'll, "I want to kill that guy who's blowing the horn because they're not getting any sleep and they keep blowing this damn horn." Yeah. So he gives this like rallying speech to all his men to go out there, and everyone's like, "Yeah," and then he gets knocked out. So the question of is he captured or handed over? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I'm under the impression personally that he is captured um, by Ramsey because there's. But there's then, this- what about the men? So do you, that's see that's true. what I'm thinking. Like okay, so remember, like are they in on it? You mean? What I think like because they do, they give him an ultimatum, right? I think yeah. that was the whole point. Like either you turn, give up, or we mm-hmm. kill all of you. Like okay. I feel like that was almost the. All I remember, well, not all I remember, all you see, per se, yeah. um, 
he gives that remember Theon gives that great great yeah, big old speech. The speech, yeah. And then he gets knocked out. But yeah. he's like, what he, he's like, seemed to he had a good speech going. I feel, I feel like <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want I don't want to interrupt him. Interrupt. <laughs> I feel like I should let it finish. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I think he throws I can't remember I'd have to go back again, but I can't yeah. remember if they threw a bag over his head and threw him over his shoulder. Or I think they I, did, yeah. It, but so I, I I mean it doesn't say it, but I'm assuming yeah. that they turned him in. Well, I know at one point within that whole like capture moment, he um so he there he's at like Ramsey's little compound or whatever, and he's kind of getting tortured for a little bit, and then they let him go to un, he's under the belief that he escapes. And he's like running through the forest and then he comes up on these other dudes and they take him. And then that's when Ramsey and they start like beating his ass up. And that's when Ramsey steps in from the shadows and he shoots all those dudes with arrows and he oh, kills yeah. all those dudes. But that's kind of, it was almost like a mousetrap. That was such a yeah, fucked up point it is. in the story. It is because Ramsey is essentially baiting him as his captor of like, you're under my control. You're my captor. I'm like, I'm going to let you go. And but he doesn't know. You, he, he, thinks he, Ramsey, doesn't know. he thinks Ramsey, he thinks that's it's yeah. almost like dude it's kind of like a mousetrap game yeah. kind of and like it's playing with your playing with your food yeah he's kind of like almost established establishing like stockholm syndrome where it's like okay he's my captor he's sa- he's my savior but now he's my captor but now but remember he's my he was savior telling at the, the same story time. like okay so remember so the whole time like mm-hmm. after uh ramsey saves him yeah um in bow and arrows those dude also remember because i think Part of the men yeah. were actually Winterfell guys. Yes, the ones yes. that Ramsay killed. Yeah, but of course yeah. they they think Ramsay's on their side, mm-hmm. obviously, because they're whole fighting the war together, right? So it's a you know the joint North. Mm-hmm. I think that um, remember he's like you little bastard. Yeah, <laughs> of course, because it's funny because Ramsay is a bastard, yeah. but um, I I literally think you know he didn't get to f- actually say what he wanted to say, yeah. like. I think he noticed that uh, yeah. Ramsey was essentially, you know, turning, because, uh, you know, ev- nev- inevitably leading to where we're, well, you know, next episode is going to yeah. be about, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I feel like uh, that was the, that's a crucial moment. It's, it bu- it's building up to, you know, the, the next episode. Yeah. Yeah. And like also within that, um, I mean, there's, Season three to me was like kind of like a slow burn. It was um, not. It feels like a, not a lot like happens, but at the same time, like a lot happens. A lot of story. Yeah, there's a lot of story because they're building up to that apex of the red wedding. Um, so like all within that, we also get um, Brienne and Jamie are on the run and they're trying to get to. I can't remember where they're trying to get to. I oh think yeah, she's no, trying to, no, she's trying to get him back to King's Landing. That's right. That's another good point. Um, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, and then within that is when, like, all within that same episode of of the chair, uh, Tyrion moving the chair, and uh, Theon getting released and then captured again, is when Brienne and uh, Jamie they get captured themselves, and Jamie's all you know talking all this high shit. He's being a smooth talker essentially, um, telling them like not to rape Brienne because of because where she comes yeah. from and that her father would, you know, like pay them. Brand of Tarf, the, uh, the Sapphire Island yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. That whole story. Yeah. Which is a really good, really good story for him to tell. And then he gets like, they're like, Oh, you want me to take your chains off my Lord? All this stuff. Like essentially playing his ass. Yeah. 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 And then that's when they chop his hand off and it's like, <sighs> I remember like seeing that when it initially aired and I was like, what? It's kind of like, it's similar to that Ned Stark moment. Cause it's like, Oh, they did it again. Like a season well, later, they did it again. I think a, a lot that had to do um, with that scene, especially is that's kind of like the big, be- it's not the beginning, but it kind of feels like the beginning of the arc. Yeah. For Jamie. Yep. Cause that's when yep. you, you at first you're into it, right? Because you yeah. hate Cersei from the beginning. Yeah. You hate Jamie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because they're trying to basically they don't give a care who they hurt, give a fuck who they hurt, or yeah. sabotage or whatever. And it, you kind of after that moment, you kind of because like there's that whole journey mm-hmm. of, of Brian and uh, Jamie trying to make their way to King's Landing. Yeah, and and uh, I think Jamie also has respect for uh, Brian because the remember the hanging women in the tree. Mm-hmm. 
And, yeah, I remember that part. And and she has she wants to bury them because Iana, yeah. and then she kills the Northmen. Mm-hmm. She was like, those are those are Winterfell um, yeah. soldiers. She's like, I don't care. I don't serve Winterfell. I don't mm-hmm. serve the North. I serve Cath- Lady Stark. Yeah, you know. So, and I think he gets that mutual respect for her, which leads him to save her once mm-hmm. he gets captured from being raped. Yeah. But I think also. Um, and that's also, you know, a good point. Again, why I think you see the beginning of his story arc is the scene in the um, bathtub. Yeah. That's when where you find... in the bathtub with her. Yeah, but yeah. he finally tells her the story of why they call him the Kingslayer. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, yeah, why didn't you tell... Why didn't you tell Adar Stark? Yeah. Like, what... That... Why you killed him. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole point leading up to it. Because that's one thing that makes you start feeling for the beginning of his arc is you feel bad for him Mm -hmm. and you start to actually like the character because you realize, Oh, maybe he, aside from his cunt of a sister, um, (laughs) maybe he's not as bad, actually as bad at her. Yeah. And maybe he does some have some like redemption value. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So yeah, I I mean, that's that's what they're getting at too. That's that's a big thing. Uh, His, his redemption value, his redemptive qualities. That's exactly, I think what they were going for with Jamie's character is, Let's cut off his hand. Let's humble his ass. Let's bring his ass down to earth. Oh, yes, my lord. And then... <laughs> and then is it, that's right. Is there yeah. a perfect pl- place for you to eat and stuff? But yeah. yeah. And, oh, with one hand, sure. And then, yeah, like that... That's like, okay, well, let's see... Let's see how he's going to fare um, losing his hand and not being the best swordsman anymore. Like having the title of Kingslayer, but not being able to, like, own up to that title anymore. So I think I think it was a great a great move character wise for him to see like, okay, well, what's going to happen next for Jamie? Like, what do we got in store? How is he going to adapt to this new lifestyle yeah. of having one hand and still trying to hold the Lannister name and be a Lannister? Cause I mean, if you look I at, I think he loves his swordsmanship so yes. well, he, he considers himself like this great knight yeah. or whatever. So losing his hand. Yeah. It's a huge thing for him. Cause it's like, he's got his brother Tyrion who his, his dad treats like shit. And it's like, okay, are you are you on that same level of Tyrion to your dad now that you're missing a limb? I think almost Tywin does kind of view Jamie that way, though. Mm-hmm. Ooh, excuse me, whiskey burp. Um, <laughs> I think he does view him that way. Yeah, because he's mad about the Night's Guard. Because because yeah. he, he he has no value for mm-hmm. Tyrion because he doesn't even you know he's like the only reason you're my son is because I can't can't prove you're not like you know what I mean. He treats yeah. him like a piece of crap. I think like he's mad at Jamie the same way because he wants him to carry on. All he cares about is legacy. Mm-hmm. As in you find out with the story of him and Arya in when they were in Heron Black and like in Heron Hall. Yeah. Um, when he's talking about the the legacy of the Targaryens and the mm-hmm. Aegon, he's like, you know, legacy is everything. Yeah. You know, I remember that. I'm gonna be dead and gone, but my name and my legacy could live on for the next thousand yeah. years or whatever yep. the case may be. So yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, like moving past that, like within this season, we get a couple other um, big points. Um, a bit, another big one is when Tywin tells uh, Jamie, or no, I'm sorry, when he tells Tyrion, like, "Hey, we need <laughs> we need Sansa to marry someone else oh, because right. my grandson's going to marry uh, Marjorie's granddaughter." I can't remember her name right now. Um, Tyrell, one of the Tyrells. I know, yeah, the Tyrells, the Tyrell. High Guard, and yeah. But I, what, what is? Damn, I'm so blank <laughs> about a young Jamie right now. Let's find um, out. Go ahead. So yeah, like any, and they're like, okay, well, well, Sansa needs to marry someone else because we need that Warden of the North. And he's like, well, Tyrion, you're gonna marry her. And he's like, wait, what? And he's like, well, you said you wanted your like legacy, you wanted your birthright, and go ahead, you can have Sansa, and you can take the North, and that can be your birthright. And it's like. Oh, oh, that's right. Mar- that was Marjorie. Marjorie. Okay, yeah, yeah Marjorie, Marjorie Tyrell. Tyrell. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, her her brother, which is uh, the Loris. Loris, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and then that's another point. Is that's when Tywin's like, um, Cersei, you're going to marry Loris. Oh and yeah, because they're, like, they're thinking of the plotting. Because, but see, the, again, this is why you got to appreciate Tywin. Is yeah. he actually he thinks like fifty steps ahead? Well, he knows that. Like, and I think obviously leading to the Red Wedding, you know, mm-hmm. is he knows that 
with them dead, yeah. she is the lady of Winterfell. Yep. So whoever she's going to hold the north. So marrying her is very, very. Um, it's crucial imp- for them. Yeah. For yeah. for the Seven Kingdoms. Yep. It's going to get them that spot in High Garden. It's going to get them that money, that power, that family value, or not that family value, but that family. And he tells her, he's like, "You're going to yeah, marry so him, and you're going to create and again." They'll own the North. Exactly. Like you're going to create, you're going to procreate again. You're going to have yeah. more kids with this guy. And she like doesn't, she doesn't want to have that. And he's like, I'm telling you, like, you could, he's laying down the You're wall. still like, fertile. He says something like rarely like, <laughs> like, like just demeaning in a sense for something to say for your daughter. Like, <laughs> you know, you're still young. You could still bear these children. Yeah. But you know what? I remember. Okay. So I, I got a little one to mm-hmm. bring up. Um, remember when I text you the other night? Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone, I don't know if you go back to, I think it's uh, episode, season three episode, I think it's either, I think it's five. Um, so this is obviously we're jumping way ahead um, as far as name recognition wise, but she, he has been mentioned in the, mm-hmm. in some of the uh, earlier episodes. Yeah. He's essentially the little, little brother of Joffrey, Cersei's youngest boy. Mm-hmm. Rob in the midst of the battle captures two young Lannister boys. Mm-hmm. They're essentially like nephews or whatever. Tommen is one of the nephews <laughs> who gets shanked by, um, uh, what is it? The, the one Rob ends up executing for killing these two boys. Cat, ca- um, um, cat, cat, car, heart, car, 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 Some- car, Starks. car, Starks. Yeah. Yes. The car, Starks. So, you yeah. know, he wanted the revenge because Jamie choked his son mm-hmm. and killed his son. Yeah. He wanted to kill the Kingslayer, but didn't. So they found, so he just has this on this rage of I'll kill any Lannister. Yeah. I don't care just because he lost his son. Um, so anyways, they end up capturing the two cousins. One of the cousins, I encourage you to look, um, is Tommen Lannister, the youngest brother of Joffrey, the youngest son of Cersei. So it's he it's played, meant to be him on purpose or is it just kind of like a background thing that they no, mentioned? No, I, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't think they thought anyone they would pay attention because he's literally a flash in it when he gets yeah. captured. Then, at, uh, then when they go into the breaking of the rooms, in the fact, they kill one of the Winterfell soldiers. Uh-huh. So, I mean, that alone is, is um, they call that a, a traitor, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm blanking on the word. Anyways, I, you only see him that split second when they go and c- kill him. Yeah. And so, but you do see his face. So I'm like, I don't think that was like on purpose. I literally think okay. they just kind of reused the character. Okay. So unless I, like, um, or unless they did like a fast one on us and like, no, it wasn't no, no. Tom and it was like Tom. We, 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 like we caught some, you. Some dumb ass we, we caught you D and D and I'm not talking about dungeons and dragons. I'm talking about douche and El douche. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Referring to the two writers over there that ruined everything for us. Hardcore fans over here. So like after that, like there's, there's kind of a lot that's, that's still going on in this season, but it's, it is really slow. Um, you got like Rob, getting married like secretly and then we found out that she's pregnant um and this is all like leading up to the the red wedding and then they have to make that bargain with will defray um because they need to they need his army essentially to take king's landing or at well, after the car starts you know what yeah, i mean after like after, after he was executed they they turned their back on rob yeah said f this bro you killed our king and then like all within that like all within the background of this you get sam um, with the girl, and they ha- the, there's the baby that she has the baby the baby. Oh, that's boy. right. We yeah, we um, haven't even talked about what goes on uh, outside the wall. Exactly. That's oh, excuse me. That's the whole uh, capture and abandonment of mm-hmm. of Jon Snow. Yes. Uh, meets um Egret. Yes, her. But um, the former- she pops his cherry. He yeah, eats her does. out, Dude, and she's like, you know "What'd what? you do with your tongue there?" Oh yeah, <laughs> you know like, nothing, know. Jon Snow. Yeah. And we have that big moment of where she finally says, "You know nothing, Jon Snow," and it's one of the best moments in Game of Thrones history, I think. Well, I mean, I don't think it's that really <laughs> big moment. the The only reason it's why is because quote. I'm just not when you've been told it your entire yeah, life. That's true, I've yeah. I've been told I've known nothing, so I just you know what I mean. If anything, I, that was more like a shot to the heart. I was like, ooh. Kind of, kind of stung a little bit, but I mean that's a good point <laughs> yeah. too. Um, Sir Jar Mormon, which is yeah. another one of my favorite characters, um, but his dad. You remember that's when they had the mm. old battle with the Wildling. Um, yeah, I forget about who he is. Mance Raider, the leader of the Wildlings. No, that's the leader. No, yeah. the one that they stay at. 
Remember, they all stay and they eat his food. And the yeah. guy, the, the guy um, that sleeps with all of his, all his daughters, daughters yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And they and kill they, the sons. They, or they, they give the they, sons to the White Walkers. Yes. Yeah. 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 But um, that's where, where Sir Jara's Mormons, Mormon, whatever you say, however you say it, that's where his dad dies because the okay. some of the brothers turn on him. Remember in the tent? Oh, uh, yeah. And that's when Sam takes uh, her, the girl. Son, yeah. Tully, I think her name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that whole, yeah, that whole thing outside, and she even admits, Ingrid admits that uh, she, she was like, don't don't think I don't see what you're doing. Yeah. She kind of knows that he's yeah. not officially on, and that's where, you know, she takes him, and <laughs> she's like, you know nothing, and then, he, yeah, he goes down. And he and gets he, that, he goes it down goes to Poontown, yep. takes that tank to Poontown, yeah. And then she never wants to leave. She's in love with him. <laughs> yeah, and then she's got that that dude that comes up to her like midway through, and he's like, "Does he love you? Because I love you, and like I would kill any. Essentially, I would kill anyone for you. Like you're my number one." And it's like, oh, yeah, who's yeah. this guy? Interesting fact. I don't know if you guys go back and watch that and pay attention to uh-huh. that. You will actually see that that guy is in Pirates of the Caribbean too. He's the guy with the with the, the uh, eyeball. Yeah, in yeah. in uh, one of my biggest. Uh, whenever I try to do a pirate expression, uh, is <laughs> is now we're sidetracking, but it's I always do. Hello, puppy. Yeah, that's it, the guy with the bald and like side yeah. clown it long hair, <laughs> which could pass for Champ Kind. I forget that actor's name, but yeah, just with longer hair. But yeah, I mean, you got all this other stuff going on like outside the wall. Um, you're introduced to Tormund. It was like one of our it's, favorites. Yes, I love yeah. gingers are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes me wish I was ginger. Hey, you gingers out there. I've never hated you. I've loved you guys. I don't think you're evil. And even if you were evil, I still side with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I absolutely love that character. Yeah, he's a good character. I think there was another interesting point. Um, yeah. The, uh, why am I blanking? But the nurse that Rob falls in love with? I don't remember her name. Like, I don't, Here. I didn't write it down. I'm, I know they mentioned it. Young at some Jamie, point. real quick. And they mentioned at some point she's fine. Like, I, and I just I don't know her name at See, all. And Rob, Rob hits it Rob. like a bunch of times. And there's a moment where they like smash up on each other. And he's like, has, he's got this whole battle plan on his table. And he's like, how am I supposed to get any work done when I'm over here looking like this and you're over here looking like that? And it's like, okay, Talisa. Like Talisa. Talisa. That is a weird name. Queen, Queen, Queen Talisa, Talisa Stark. Stark. Well, they, she has to be called Queen because she's married to King Stark. Yeah, but um, like day. interesting. Mm-hmm. There's a little, um, a little moment between Catherine Stark and Tal- Talisa Stark. Yeah, where she's making another dream catcher. Yeah, or what? It, the God catcher. Uh-huh. I'll call it with it because basically it looks like a dream catcher, but it has what all. They call she, it the God catcher. No, they just. I don't even know what it's called. But <laughs> I like that I name. Just, though. I That's just call cool. it the God catcher the because God catcher. she basically creates like out of all the different things. The gods in this circular thing that you hang above the bed, which okay. could be considered a dream catcher. Dream catcher. She tells an interesting story about Edar Stark coming, mm-hmm. her husband coming home with John. Yeah, after that's the right. war, that's right. and she and she 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 wished him ill. Mm-hmm. He got the pox one winter, and she was saying like, uh, "Oh, have you built it?" And she's like, "I've only built it twice in my life." So that was the third time she was building it for Rob. Yeah. Second one she built for Ran, uh, Bran, Bran Stark. And then um, the, she explains with the first one she for one of her youngest, which happened to be John. Mm-hmm. And you, I mean, you find that out later as she's telling the story itself. But she said that she wished ill on this kid. She was mm-hmm. so unhappy. And then she, she, any the the whole story is just how she believes that everything that's happening, and her husband dying, Bran. No legs, this whole war. She believes everything's happening because of this no one legs. instant, yeah. the promise she broke. She prayed to the gods that, you know, at first he would die. And yeah. then she felt so bad. And she built the, obviously explaining why she built it. She prayed to the gods, please let him live. You know, he's just a bit, all this kind of stuff. And if you do, I will raise him. I will love him like my own. And she's like, I failed. I failed the gods. I didn't, I didn't keep my promise. And I, and I think this is why everything that's happening is happening. Yeah. Hmm. But I also, um, so that's just one instance that I noticed particularly another yeah. part. I think this is where you kind of, um, 
Gurgain or the Hound. Mm. I, this is where you kind of, you love the Hound. Obviously, you love the Hound because he's like, fuck the king. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. That is such a great it's golden line. Yeah, that's a great speech. And you just, you want to say it to anyone. Fuck yeah. that guy. You know? <laughs> but um, he, he, he gets captured. He does. By uh, the... What are they called? I don't. Well, the, don't the brother, the, the brother, the brotherhood. That's yeah. Right. They're called okay. the brotherhood, but yeah. um, are they like the brotherhood of light? Because I know like no. Melisandre bumps into them at some point within that season, and um, Melisandre and she takes uh, Gendry, Gendry, Bar- Baratheon. But yeah. I think it's and she tells him like this is your home when they they roll up to King's Landing on their boat, and she's like this is your father's home, and he's like who's my father, and she's like, um. What's his face? Robert Baratheon was your father. Yes. Like you're meant for great things. So yeah, that's, a, that's a big moment too. Yeah, but that's also where two other characters that have actually... I mean, I, I would almost feel that the first season as far as important mm-hmm. characters... They, sure, everyone's important. I would say yeah. everyone plays a, a purpose or a ro- has a role. Yeah, for sure. But and see, you start seeing characters that really develop specific like that have major roles mm-hmm. or major parts to play later on yeah. in the series uh barrack that's his name i don't think you ever hear his last name but barrack is the one that essentially died six times yeah and gets brought back that's to life by the drunken priest yep and i think i've only ever heard him called the drunken beast um that's a cool name might have to change my name for the show barrack <laughs> like barrack like no the drunken priest that's a that's a, that's a great name. one the drunken wizard that would be a good well, name I, I i might change it to that y'all do the comments. Comment on it. Do Let something. It t- Come vote on it. Yeah. Do a vote, poll. Vote, do a poll. Do a vote. Do, hey, you know we what? Keep it the practical t- wizard or the drunken wizard. They, one of the well, other. Well, I mean, I could. I call him the practical wizard because you he, think I'm practical. Which well, is well, I think you're nice practical. I think you. I think you're logical. Thank you. I appreciate your, that. In wi- wizardry, when yeah. it comes to creative writing, I, I like the whole wizard. Write, I, I like wizard in general. I, I respect with drinks. I respect your writing opinion, other than when it comes to Game of Thrones. <laughs> Which is how this sh- show developed, right? Yeah. But um, Beric and anyways, the drunken priest. I'll call okay. him the drunken beast. That's but a cool the, name. The, those stick with those that. two are are pretty awesome. You kind of uh, learn to love them, and then Arya's development. Yeah, that's where that's She's where got a big she development too. That's where really she starts coming to her to, into her own. She, I mean, she always said, "I'm no lady." Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know what I mean. I don't want to be a lady. She did. Yeah, being a queen or a lady of this—that's never her thing. She wanted to be a knight. She did, which is what's kind of like her and Brianna kind of share that same thing. Yeah, the younger version of her, which obviously those who watch it know those develop a bond. But I think uh, seeing those characters, you, you, the Brotherhood. I mean, they have a bigger role to play later on. But I. I I love that whole thing. I, I love that whole scene. I love like Air, uh, Arya and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think though. Sansa has a, has some moments too. <sighs> with an, I know, I know, I know. No, Sansa has some moments where she, her and Shay they have they have moments together because they're in it. Um, I mean, ultimately, we know Shay's fate. Y'all have seen it. Y'all know her fate. I fucking hate Shay. Traitor. I didn't like yeah. her. I didn't like her from the beginning. And if I don't care, <laughs> you can tell me I'm stupid. If I, if that girl, I swear. Other than other than open orifices, or <laughs> <laughs> don't burn me at there the stake for an, that one. There was another moment too, and I I, I wanted to text you when I saw it, what? but I didn't. But I was like, I'm just gonna keep watching. Okay, okay. When Rosie she dies within this season three, and she's that's all after- she's all no. This is season three. She's all strung up on the no, bed no. Post. I know, but that's after the red wedding. Is it no? Now? She dies beforehand. I swear it's beforehand because she's she's all strung up on like the bedpost. She's got the arrows like in her chest because they zoom in like on her boobs, and she's got this Dude, like see through shirt on. First of all, like, okay. you know what? She's got like an arrow in her throat, a couple arrows in her chest, and it's like, and it's when, um, Littlefinger is like talking all this shit That's about. Like, I, I, everyone hates him. Like he's talking all this shit about like him knowing stuff or whatever and like how important certain things are. And it's like a, it's a very dramatic moment. Like not only with like his speech, like the cinematography, the lighting, the music. And they like, they kind of like cut to her being like crucified essentially. And it's like, what was that about? Like who did, did she rat someone out? Well, why did she die? 
Because Joffrey is a serial killer. But well, you know what? You, yeah. Bring it up, Rosie. You know what? <laughs> you know what? The hoe Rosie. Pour one out. Nah, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it, bro. I don't care. <laughs> Boobs a throne. I've been telling everyone this, and I, and I don't give a care. I don't fuck what anyone thinks, all right? Boobs the throne? R- r- yes. Rosie has probably the best boobs <laughs> out of all the boobs you see in Game of Thrones. And like, dude, you could say it's a piggish thing to say. I'm just saying like yeah. even women appreciate nice nice breast assists. Um, <laughs> breasts of Westeros. The, the, the breasts like of the, Westeros. The breast of Westeros. Yeah. Fuck we'll, it, we'll talk about the walk of shame when we get there. Cause I have like no. something in my, I have something in my back pocket. That's okay. Probably gonna blow uh, you know, you, you might already know it. You might. No, not. no, I don't. But I'm gonna keep. At least it in my I can't think about. It. I, at so least we'll, I can't. We'll think talk about, about it when we get there. It might blow your mind. Okay. It'll be nice. Like I really want to tell you now, but I'm. No, 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 no. Yeah, we'll, we'll just, wait for just it. Just save it. Just we'll save wait for it. I mean, essentially, that's that's all I got from season three so far. I know we're gonna do a full episode just on the red wedding. Which, I'm by the way, guys, that. uh, that's going to be our cr- that we at least we hope we're, yeah. we're, we're working shooting on, for I, it. Yes, we're we're, yeah, we're shooting for the release. Our Christmas episode is going to be the red wedding. Yeah, and I think we should wear Christmas sweaters. I don't have a Christmas sweater. Yeah, if I can go buy one, I dude. have a Christmas shirt. You know what? I'm gonna get a Game of Thrones Christmas sweater. <laughs> That'd be dope. Should be in by in time. If I put yeah. that on, put that on. We could do that. In fact, I'm gonna see. <laughs> Sidetrack myself right here. I'm they just take do- they take Klarna and and or after pay. I'm no, sure. G O T ugly cr- Christmas sweater. Chris, no, it doesn't have to, be, have ugly. to be ugly. It just has, just to, has to be a Christmas sweater. sweater. Yeah, they do have. One. Hopefully, they have a Targaryen one. If not, I would get a one. They got one. ones with like Ned's head or what? No, bro. Oh, they do. They have a Targaryen one. I'm getting it. I for our Christmas episode, I will be wearing a Targaryen one. He will most likely be wearing one <laughs> of probably like Jamie naked. Just Jamie. That'd manager. be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. I would, I would wear that. He would rock it. I would rock it. Yeah. Rock it. But okay. <laughs> that's we, that's we, all I got for season two or three. Uh, see, season but it, three. I think, I think me, I think that's probably the, what I could think of. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. That's, Every, that's what I got. So, you know what? Go ahead and do all the things that uh, they do. Like, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the bell notification icon. Tell all your stuff. friends, tell your family, tell your mom. And you could follow us also on Instagram at Whiskey and Dragons. Mm-hmm. No podcast, just at Whiskey and Dragons. At Whiskey and Dragons. It wasn't taken. So thank you again for watching Whiskey and Dragons, where we drink whiskey. And we talk dragons. I'm Targaryen the Barbarian. And I'm Steve the Drunk Wizard. The we'll, drunk, see, we'll try that out right well, yeah, now. Yeah, let him know. He let he wants know, to know. Please, please uh, let me know. He wants to. Know, he wants to give him that fire name. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, can't wait to see you guys next week, where we talk about the red wedding, Ooh. the special Christmas episode. I'll have Hopefully my awesome Christmas, Christmas sweater. Not ugly. Anything with Targaryen <laughs> is not ugly. But anyways, guys, thank you. And Cheers. Bye.